Welcome. In this video, I will talk about inbreeding depression and genetic rescue. Let's begin with some basic review of evolutionary principles so we're all on the same page. First, we're going to start with genetic drift, also known as random evolutionary change. Genetic drift is when an allele's frequency changes due to random chance. In most cases, genetic drift will have a greater effect on populations that are smaller in size. When we think of genetic drift, the easiest example that comes to mind is natural disasters that tend to wipe out a lot of alleles in a short amount of time. Genetic drift does not necessarily cause a higher fitness in individuals, it just sort of makes them different. The next thing I want to review is gene flow, also known as gene migration. Gene flow is changes in allele frequency due to mixing with new, genetically different populations. The best examples of gene flow are immigration and emigration. Like genetic drift, the effects of gene flow are most easily seen in smaller populations. All right. Now that we've done a review, we can move on to the topic of conversation, inbreeding depression. For those of you who don't totally know what inbreeding depression is, no worries, I'll explain. Inbreeding depression is when the breeding of related individuals occurs as a result, the biological fitness of that population is reduced. When I say biological fitness, I mean a population's ability to survive and reproduce. We tend to see inbreeding depression more commonly in populations that are going extinct, such as the Kincaid's lupin from Western Oregon grasslands, which is a population of flowers in Oregon that has been listed as threatened. They are a major food source to another endangered species, the fender blue butterfly. They are threatened because their habitat is slowly in decline. So, populations with a higher gene pool or higher genetic variation are less likely to fall into inbreeding depression. So, even though inbreeding depression sounds bad, there is a solution. Genetic rescue. Genetic rescue is this cool process that can happen naturally, but is usually facilitated by humans. Where populations with an inbreeding depression receive genes from other populations so that their overall genetic diversity is increased. These can also be populations that are threatened or in danger of extinction. That being said, there's not a whole lot of research on genetic rescue. And if there is, there's not much on long-term genetic rescue, which, be which begs the question, if this is such an amazing thing that could potentially save populations from extinction or just inbreeding depression, why don't we use it more often? All right, so the biggest reason that genetic rescue isn't often used is because of the potential for outbreeding depression. Outbreeding depression is when genetically distant individuals mate, and it results in the offsprings exhibiting a lower fitness in the parental environment than either of the parents. So, basically, the offspring can't survive very well in an environment that they were born into. Genetic rescue can also cause the problem of the original population's alleles becoming completely eliminated and taken over by the population or individual that was placed into the population suffering from inbreeding depression. A great example of this is an article written in 2012 by Michael Atkinson and others. It talks about a severely inbred population of wolves in Scandinavia. <coughs> that was observed for several years and was a completely good candidate for genetic rescue. So, a group of scientists introduced a wolf from a different population to this one. And for a while, 
It worked, and the population was doing much better. However, they realized towards the end of the study that the population was losing some of its original alleles and being replaced by the alleles of this new wolf. So, as much as we would love to use genetic rescue, there's a lot more thought that goes into deciding if a population is a good candidate for genetic rescue. Then there are all the reproductions that come along with genetic rescue to think about. The only thing that we can do is keep trying and hope for the best. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if anything I said piqued your interest and you are now super interested in genetic rescue, there's a fantastic TED Talk on the subject, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye!